Hello everyone, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Maddie. I run EdTech Classroom, the blog, podcast, and of course, YouTube channel. Today is Vlogmas Day 23. Now, if you aren't familiar with Vlogmas, it's something that a bunch of YouTubers do where we post a new video every single day in December up until Christmas. So like I said, today is Vlogmas Day 23, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving a tutorial on how to use Explain Everything. Explain Everything is one of my favorite ed tech tools. It is a presentation tool and an interactive whiteboard that teachers can use to create lessons and students can use to show what they know. I personally love the idea of students specifically using this tool to help explain a concept. In today's video, I'm going to be using Explain Everything in my browser on my computer. Explain Everything does have an app that you can use, so if you would prefer to use this tool on your iPad, you do have the ability to do that. Also in today's video, I am going to be using Explain Everything in conjunction with my One by Wacom pen tablet. Now you do not need to have a One by Wacom in order to use Explain Everything. I personally just like to use this pen tablet to make my digital handwriting a little bit more legible. But of course, it's not necessary in order for you to use this tool. So like I said, today's video is going to be a tutorial on how to use Explain Everything in your classroom. So without further ado, let's get started. So I am on the Explain Everything website and I've gone ahead and just created an account and you'll see here that this is what it looks like when you log into your account for the first time. I have no files saved in my drive because I haven't created any yet. The first step is you're going to want to create a new project. So you'll go over here where it says new project and you'll click this button and it will create a new project for you. Now there are three different ways that you can get started with this new project. First, you can create a blank canvas, which basically just means you'll have a blank canvas for you to interact with. Then there's also an option for you to choose from some different templates. And then lastly, you can upload a file. The way this file upload works is let's say you have a file like a PowerPoint presentation saved on your computer. You can actually upload that to explain everything to be as the background of your slides here. So I really like the ability to upload a file if you have something saved on your computer already that you want to be able to interact with and use in explain everything. Let's take a look at these template examples before we move on to creating a blank canvas. So we'll click on template here. And you'll see that there are lots of different templates that we can choose from. Personally, I find myself using this Venn diagram option here often. You can also scroll down a little bit. This lesson starter is a really great template for teachers. There's weekly reviews, there's pros and cons. So you'll see there's lots of choices for you as a teacher. This storyboard one can be really great, especially if you're doing a lesson where you want students to create a movie. They can use this storyboard feature to sort of, you know, storyboard out their ideas. Lots of choices here that you can choose from. I'm gonna go ahead and press the back button because we're gonna use a blank canvas for the purpose of today's video. So I clicked on blank canvas and it's loading. And you'll see that now it asks us if we want to enable our microphone. So you have the option to enable a microphone now or you can do it later. I'm gonna go ahead and just join with our microphone now so I don't forget later, but you do have the ability to start off with it muted if you would like. So I'll click on join with microphone and I'm just gonna click off to the side. We'll ignore that invitation for now. And first I wanna talk about some of these creative tools. So again, this is a blank canvas here. And on the left-hand side, you'll see that we have a lot of different creative tools. The one that we have selected right now is going to be the hand tool. That tool you, will, you can use to move around different objects and shapes. I'll show you how that works in just a bit. The first tool I want us to look at is this tool right here, which is the draw tool. So I just clicked on it. And again, I'm using my one by Wacom pen tablet. It works the exact same way with a trackpad or a computer mouse, whatever tool you're using to click and select. So now you'll see that first I can change the size of my pen thickness. So right now it's kind of on this medium option here. You can make your, your pen really thick. You can make it much more thin. I'll just keep it on the option it's selected already. Next, we can choose our drawing style. So we have a pen or we have a pencil option. Then next we have these colors as well. So let's say I wanna choose this blue color here. I can just click on it. And now that I'm ready to begin writing, what I will do is I will click and drag to create my text. 
So you can create drawings, you can create illustrations this way, or like I did, you can just use little squiggles. You can also use this to write too, uh, so that it can be sort of like that digital whiteboard experience that you might have with Google Jamboard or another digital whiteboarding tool. So that's how you use the pen tool. Next, I'm going to show you the highlighter tool, which is just underneath the pen tool. So I'll click here and we have the highlighter tool. I really like to use the highlighter tool if I am giving an example for students on how to annotate. So let's say I want to choose this yellow here. Again, I can change the thickness. Let's make this really thick so it's easy to see. And I just again, just click and drag and you'll see that I can highlight. So the highlighter tool is really great if you want to provide emphasis on something or if you're modeling for students how to annotate or if you just like the style of the highlighter in comparison to the pen tool. Lots of different reasons for my, why you might want to use this tool. Next, we have the eraser tool. So if I click here on eraser, you'll see that I can begin erasing. So my, right now, my eraser is really thin. If I wanted to erase a lot of text here, I would want to make this a lot bigger. And you'll see I can just press down just like how I would use the pen tool to go over and actually erase all of this text here. Then next, we have the paint bucket tool. Let's say you want to change the color of something, like let's say I want to change the color of this highlighter. I can click here on green, and now I'll go over here to this pen, or this, uh, this uh, highlighter here. I'll click, and now you'll see it's actually changed the color. So that's one way that you can use this paint bucket tool to actually change the color of something that you've already created. Next, we have the shape tool. So for the shape tool, you can click here to change the shape. Right now we are selected on the square, but let's say you want to create a circle. You can click here on the circle and let's say you want to make it yellow, for example. You can just click and drag and it will create a circle where the outline here is going to be yellow and the inside is gray, as you see. Now let's say you wanted to change the inside color of this circle. The way you could do that is you could just click back on the shape, click on the paint bucket tool, click yellow, and now click in the center of the circle and you'll see that the whole circle is now transformed to be the color yellow. So next after the shape tool you'll see we also have this text tool here. The way the text tool works is just like how you would create a text box in Google Docs or in Google Slides for example, you can use the text box tool. So I can go ahead and create a text box just by clicking and dragging and now I can type in you know welcome to my presentation. And if I wanted to change the font, I can do that by clicking here, change the font. Let's say I like this font here. Oops, sorry, I want to highlight my text before I change the font. And I can resize it. I can resize this text box if I wanted to add more text to it. If I wanted to change the font size, I could do that just by changing the size here. Also, if you wanted to add some of these features, if you are teaching a math or science lesson, you do have the ability to add superscript and subscript text. So now that I've created my text box, if I wanted to move it around, I could just do that by clicking and dragging. Again, I can make this text box bigger. If I wanted to center align it, I could do that. So that's how the text box works. So next, after text box, we have this uh, cutout tool. I don't find myself using that tool too often, so I'm going to skip over it for now. But if that's something you have a question about, I can answer it in the comments down below. Then next we have this delete tool. So the way this delete tool works is you can click and let's say I want to delete this circle. I can then just press the X and it will get rid of the yellow part of the circle. And now to delete the whole circle, I can press the X and it'll go away. I also can highlight a big group of objects, then press the X and you'll see it will all disappear. So that's how you use the delete tool. Then next we have the laser pointer tool. So the way the laser pointer tool works is if you want to specifically highlight something, if you're giving a you know presentation and you really want to emphasize something that's up here, you can use this laser pointer tool just by clicking and dragging to highlight a specific, a specific uh, you know, area of your presentation that you'd like to cover. All right, so that's how you use the creative features in Explain Everything. Now let's talk about how you would actually record a presentation. So right now I've done a little bit of prep work, right? I've just added this text box up to the top here that says, welcome to my presentation. Now, if I am ready to begin uh, recording my presentation, what I will do is I will go down to the bottom here and I will want to press the start recording button. 
that will actually record my screen. So if you are wanting to use this tool to, you know, create a pre-recorded lesson, you would press start recording and it would record everything on your screen, including your audio because my microphone is turned on. All right, now that we're ready to begin recording our presentation, I'm going to press this record button. Now, please bear with me. I have no plans for how this presentation is going to go, so I'm just going to wing it. So we're going to go ahead and press this record button here to start recording. All right, so now it's time for us to talk about our presentation. So you'll see that everything at the bottom of the screen is recording. You'll see that we have the time that's going. You can see that my microphone is on. Everything is ready to go. So now what I can do is I can start using these creative features in real time. So let's say I want to explain a concept using this drawing tool. You know, maybe I will uh, tell a story. I might draw a stick figure here. This is where I said I don't really have a plan for this presentation, but it's just like how you might teach a lesson in your classroom. So I can say, you know, welcome to my presentation. This is a drawing that I'm creating as we're learning about stick figures in our class right now. I can label, I can, you know, add details. I can say, you know, hair, Maybe I would prefer to type out my labels. I can do that by going to the text box feature. I can, you know, add my text box and I can say stick figure. I can move it around I can click and I click and drag by going to that hand tool, move it around. This is my stick figure. You know, maybe you might want to incorporate some math into your lesson here. So you might go over back to the pen tool. You can click here on to change the color. You know, I might say that two plus seven equals nine. Maybe I'll say, you know, two times seven equals 14. And now that I'm done and I'm ready to end my presentation, I can go ahead into the bottom here, just press the stop. And my presentation is done recording. So now I've created my presentation and I can look through and see if I want to make some edits. So I finished my presentation here. You'll see that it is one minute and 32 seconds long. I like to keep these videos short, especially if you're giving them to students to watch as homework, for example, or if you're wanting them to watch these videos during class time. I like to keep these pretty short and almost use this as a micro lesson for students. But at the end of the day, you know your students and your course material better than I do. So do what you feel like makes the most sense for your classroom. So now if you wanted, you can, you know, make some adjustments here. I can uh, zoom in to see this time, uh, uh, you know, a little bit more. You'll see that these are the spots that I've actually added content, which is why we see these here. So now let's press the play button to see what our video looks like. I'm gonna turn up my volume so you guys can hear. Everything at the bottom of the screen is recording. You'll see that we have the time that's going. You can see that my microphone is on. Everything is ready to go. Draw a stick figure here. This is where I said I don't really have a plan. So you'll see that it has recorded my screen. It's just a typical screen recording that you might create using a tool like QuickTime. But what I really like about this is it just allows everything to be sort of stored in one place. So I find that to be really helpful. So now when you're done and you are ready to share this with your students, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. You can go up to the top right hand corner of your screen and you'll see that I have this code right here that I can use as an invite link. I can copy and I can share this with students or they can use my unique invite code. You can change some of the sharing permissions. You can also add people directly. If you wanted to add collaborators, you could do that by clicking on this option here. And if you wanted to, you know, create a web video link, you could do that. You could export this if you wanted to export this as an MP4 and, you know, save it to YouTube, for example, or upload it to, you know, your learning management system. And then lastly, the last feature I want to show you guys is this more menu. So if I click on more, you'll see that there are some additional settings, the help center, keyboard shortcuts, video hints about. This was very much a beginner's tutorial to help you get started with explain everything. There are way more advanced features that I didn't cover in today's video, but I hope that you found this video to be helpful in getting started with using explain everything in your classroom. Thank you so much for watching today's video all about using explain everything in your classroom. If you liked this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I post weekly tech tutorials for teachers and during Vlogmas I'm posting a new video every single day in December up until Christmas. So I'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye friends.